Would you like to know how to access these screens and how to change the configuration of your receiver or transmitter? Well, stick around and I'll show you how. My journey started then with this little seven channel receiver. It's only marked with Edge TX E7, ELRS 2400, seven channel. I got it off of uh, a seller on AliExpress and it arrived in due course and set me on this journey. One thing that puzzled me from the get go was channel seven says channel seven stroke LED. I wasn't quite sure what that was about. And one of the reasons for choosing this module apart from the seven channels is I've soldered this lead on. It has the VBAT remote battery monitoring up to 36 volts. Most of the early receivers had an ADC pin, but that was not really much use without the voltage divider. As we can see here, when I first got the receiver, it was loaded with six channel PWM firmware. It was a previous release. What I did then was naturally to update it to 3.30 and naturally chose the 7 PWM version, thinking that they may have made a mistake for some reason. But having flashed that version to the receiver, the receiver failed to work at all. Uh, all it did was to immediately switch on the status LED rapid flashing as if it was in Wi-Fi mode, but no Wi-Fi signal. The thing appeared to be completely screwed. Fortunately, I have one of these FTDI cards and that uh, saved the day. I was able to reflash it back to the six channel version using the flash via UART function. The mystery started as to why it wouldn't work with seven channel, it, although it was a seven channel receiver and came and worked perfectly with the six PWM. Naturally, the first thing that I did was to contact the supplier and I got no reply whatsoever, which was uh, somewhat disappointing. However, searching around on AliExpress, I found exactly the same receiver, this time called a Cyclone, but it is identical. I was extremely puzzled to see this description here. The PWM 6 channel, 7 channel or CRSF switch is easy to switch without rebrushing the firmware. And it goes on and tells you to open your browser to 10.0.0.1 slash hardware.html. What on earth is going on? That's what we're going to look at next. Immediately then I connected the receiver up to my local network and then you go to elrs underscore rx dot local and of course I saw what I expected to see. No changes here. And if we scroll down we can see there the six channels. What about this mysterious hardware tab? Well, here it is, and it talks about loading target configurations and choosing files. And then we get into the good stuff. And at this point, I should warn you strongly not to mess around with any of this if you don't know what you're doing. I've had some experience with these Semtex chips using them in the LoRa transmitters and receivers and I did a, a video or a couple of videos back in 2018 where I explored those possibilities. Have a look at that up there if you wish. But suffice it to say these values are of no mystery to me when we're talking about Mozzie and Mizzy reset pins and S-clock. I was intrigued then to see what else we could see. Moving on down, the stuff about the radio power, power settings here, and the power level control via Semtech, that is the radio chip on the board, if you will. And then we get into some stuff mentioning LEDs. And I draw your attention to the LED pin, which is labeled as 16. Moving on down, here it defines the PWM output pins. And as we can see, there are only six defined at the moment. So clearly it's not going to be working as a seven channel receiver. Then we have the VBAT pin and offsets and stuff. It might be interesting to mess around in there if you 
had some sort of scaling issue or you would normally correct those values on your transmitter. So probably best left alone. And finally, save target configuration. Well, that's all well and good, but where do we find these configuration files? Going back to the AliExpress listing, it says we provide PWM7 channel or CRSF files. And it's in Chinese, but it's obvious that you select the files here and then save them. As it shows here, we have seven channel JSON or CRSF JSON. Now JSON are files which are human readable that define the filling in of all of those fields on the hardware page. Saves you making mistakes or having to fill them in manually. You just select the file you want. I then did some investigation and found that you can see the settings if you go to LRS RX local slash hardware JSON. And here we can see the current field values. Again, the LED on 16 and the outputs there for the six channels. I could only assume then that these JSON files affect those values, but I didn't have them. Fortunately, contacting this supplier was a much better experience. I will leave a link in the description to shop 4375031 where you can buy this receiver. Uh, as the guy was so very, very helpful, I'm certainly not going to recommend the link to the supplier that I originally bought it from. Suffice it to say, I now have the JSON files. Let's apply one and see what happens. Just to show you there's nothing up my sleeve, we'll go back into the main web UI. And again, in the models tab, we have just the six channels. Going back then here, and we'll choose the seven channel file. And we get a sort of a warning here that this is a customized configuration for a custom hardware build or testing purposes. We can see here that it's filled in the new parameters. Although we still have 16 as the LED pin, 16 is now here as a PWM output, uh, the channel 7. So this clears up the mystery of LED stroke channel 7. But we have to commit this to the receiver. So we click the save target and reboot the receiver. That's going to take a few seconds. We'll be back soon. Do not adjust your set. OK, we're back in Wi-Fi mode. Let me refresh this page. Those changes then should be committed. We go back to the main UI tab and refresh that. Selecting the model. And hey presto, we now have channel 7. Hurrah! Here then is a comparison of the original JSON output and the updated version. If we close those windows just for completeness in the tab here, we can download or we can reset the receiver back to its pre-configured defaults, which will make it a six channel receiver once again. We'll, we'll just click on the download and we can see it here in its raw format with the 16 added to the PWM outputs. That's all fine and dandy then. The next stage will be, I'll just wrap the video up by connecting the receiver to my transmitter and showing you those PWM outputs from four to seven. We're all set up now. I'll just show you the setup on the radio, the channel's monitor, four, channel 5, channel 6, and finally channel 7. Plug in, in the receiver then. It's now bound, so we have our channel 4, our channel 5, a bit jittery that one, channel 6, and channel 7. 
Excellent, so everything is working and I hope you found this video of interest. Thanks for watching.